Professor Yellen sent me his kind invitation to speak at this outstanding meeting, you can see that his title um, gave me the challenge of talking about the novel uh, aspects of this subject. And after a sim single uh, introductory slide, that will be the focus of my talk. So here we see the normal response to a loop diuretic given during a high salt intake in the top or a low salt intake in the bottom. And it shows sodium excretion in millimoles per six hours. And the first intravenous dose of furosemide increases the salt excretion uh, remarkably, as you'll see in gold. But the interesting finding is that afterwards, there is a period of 18 hours of renal salt retention such that over the three days of diuretic administration on the high salt diet, the salt lost with the diuretic was matched quantitatively by salt retention after the diuretic and no negative salt balance. On the low salt diet below, uh, although there was salt loss with the diuretic, there was no way the kidney could restore salt balance because no salt was present in the diet reminds us of the importance of post-diuretic salt retention and also the need to uh, consider and restrict dietary salt intake. In a study by uh, Jeffrey Testani, he assessed proximal and distal reabsorption by lithium clearance in a group of patients with diuretic-resistant heart failure and concluded that about three-quarters of the resistance was due to enhanced reabsorption downstream from the site of the loop diuretic. In this talk, I'm going to discuss with you uh, strategies to um, enhance uh, delivery of salt to the diuretic sensitive segment by blocking proximal reabsorption with hydralazine or SGLT2 inhibitors, the use of improved loop diuretics, notably extended release torsamide, uh, and the uh, concept of a uh, nephron, sequential nephron blockade when multiple nephron segments are blocked simultaneously. In this study here, uh, as a patient with severe diuretic resistant heart failure uh, was given uh, escalating diuretics up to 220 milligrams of, per hour of intravenous furosemide and 500 milligrams twice a day of chlorothiazide but still her fractional excretion of sodium was less than two. The addition of 10 milligrams three times daily of hydralazine doubled the FENA and the daily, sodium, uh, daily urine output to three and a half liters and allowed her discharge from the intensive care unit. Hydralazine certainly increases blood flow to the kidney and therefore delivery of diuretics to their site of action but we thought that was unlikely the major co cause of the naturesis here because she was getting the drugs at supramaximal doses round the clock. It also reduces the filtration fraction by hemodynamic effect and thereby reduces proximal sodium uptake and, in, and uh, therefore acts as a proximal diuretic. And we thought that was the more likely site of action in this case. This shows the response of normal subjects to uh, the traditional uh, dose of a traditional form of torsamide uh, in red, or a novel formulation that releases torsamide slowly into the blood and the urine in green. And you'll see in the first panel that the time to maximal effect was increased three and a half fold, with a corresponding change in the middle panel in sodium excretion which was both more prolonged and extended over the period of what would normally be post-diuretic salt retention with a traditional immediate acting diuretic. The net effect, as shown in the middle panel, was to double the sodium output in 24 hours, and in the last panel to increase the amount of salt excreted per unit of diuretic reaching the urine, again by about twice. SGLT2 inhibitors are drugs of great interest and block uh, proximal sodium reabsorption uh, linked to glucose, but in normal kidneys, this is fairly trivial and amounts to about 5%. However, it's apparent 
that SDLT2 is structurally and functionally linked to other transporters, notably sodium hydrogen exchanger 3, which reabsorbs the bulk of proximal sodium reabsorption. Therefore, blocking SDLT2, as shown in the bottom panel, simultaneously blocks NHE3 and other proximal reabsorption, re reabsorptive pathways and leads to a large increase in the delivery of sodium and chloride from the proximal tuber into the loop of Henle. And we hypothesize then that this would lead to synergy with loop diuretics. And this is shown here that uh, in the first panel, the SGLT2 inhibitors increase the amount of salt delivered to the target for loop diuretics and should therefore increase their responsiveness. Whereas on the right, we show that um, loop diuretics by increasing renin and angiotensin uh, enhance the expression of SGLT2 and NHE3 in the proximal tubule and therefore the target for SGLT2 inhibitors. And when we tested this in normal subjects, you'll see that bumetanide alone in the green increased sodium excretion by about 115 millimoles in six hours. But when given after a week of dapagliflozin, the naturesis was increased by about one third. In the right panel in blue, Dapagliflozin alone is a relatively feeble naturetic agent, increasing sodium excretion less than 40 millimoles. But when given after a week of, of uh, bumetanide, remarkably, the dapagliflozin, the dapagliflozin now increases sodium excretion by an amount equivalent in green to a normal loop diuretic, about a threefold increase showing mutual two-way synergy between these two groups of drugs. Lastly, uh, uh, it shows the, the concept of sequential nephron blockade. If loop diuretic resistance is due to enhanced reabsorption at other sites, and if this also sets up the electrochemical environment for more potassium secretion and hypokalemia, then it may be logical to consider the use of multiple uh, diuretic agents together to block not only compensatory sodium reabsorption, but also potassium secretion. Indeed, as you see here in this study of 17 patients with acute diuretic resistant heart failure, the uh, infusion of furosemide, spironolactone, metolazone, thiazide, acetazolamide, a proximal diuretic, and tolvaptan, an acuretic, together led to the loss of seven kilograms over four days without any measurable change in uh, electrolytes, blood pressure, or GFR, likely because these subjects were being forced to excrete what is really a, a, a hardly modified glomerular filtrate. Further studies will be necessary, and I know are underway, to see if this can be uh, shown to be a reproducible and clinically useful strategy. Lastly, putting this together then, in heart failure we need to consider neurohumeral blockade with ACEs and ARBs, for example. Hydralazine may add to this by uh, enhancing, uh, uh, by, by uh, reducing proximal reabsorption. And in addition to a loop diuretic, we can consider an SGLT2 inhibitor blocking proximal reabsorption, a thiazide, a milleride, or a mineralocorticosteroid receptor blocker such as spironolactone blocking downstream, and should always remember to uh, consider reducing dietary salt intake. Thank you very much.